Welcome to Savvy Sab's podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. So <laughs> I wasn't going to do this video, but I did receive questions about it. So I felt like it would be unfair for me to not at least respond to those questions. So many of you by now may have seen the video controversy with uh, Vosh going on to Crystal and Kyle show and Jim Perlman's show and more recently, Jimmy Dore going on to Fred Hampton left us. And one of the questions that has come my way is, as a Black leftist commentator, how do you feel about these shows having these guests on? So I'm going to do a couple of things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of how I approach situations. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play you two clips, one from Kyle's show where he addresses having Vosh on, and the other clip is from Jimmy Dore on Fred Hampton Left Us. After that, stay with me, because then I'm going to give you my breakdown about how it makes me feel and how we can move forward. So the first part, giving you an overview. When I approach situations in life, I try to do so by doing two things. One, thinking about situations and things that I can control. And two, thinking about situations and things that I cannot control. So let's start with the latter. Guys, I cannot control who other commentators bring on their show. I just can't. I have no control over that. I cannot control what guests say on their shows. One of the things that came my way was, how do you feel about Vosh using the N-word? I've never seen Vosh's show. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. But again, that's another thing that I cannot control. What I can control is what I do on my show and continuing what I do on my platform, which is educating people about leftist issues and how they affect Black leftists. I can continue to do that. Now, in reference to these recent episodes that just happened, there are two clips that I do want to play for you. The first one is from FHL when Jimmy Dore was on there. So the question that came my way was, how do you feel about, you know, Jimmy Dore going on to FHL, knowing that he had the Boogaloo Boys on his show? You know, how do you feel knowing that they didn't discuss this? First of all, they did discuss it. And this is one of the problems that I've noticed a lot on Twitter. People will share things and people will read the headline, but they won't actually watch the video. I actually watched the full interview with Jimmy Dore and they did discuss the Boogaloo situation. And I'm going to play that for you really quick. I want to ask you, I want to give you a chance to clarify if people were like, Jimmy Dore advocate working with racists. He don't understand the history of the Black Panthers. This is your chance to clarify that. This is where I stand. Where, where, where do you stand on this issue, Jimmy? So uh, every person I've met who criticized me for interviewing uh, Magnus uh, didn't watch the interview. Every single person. No one who ever watched that interview criticized me because I don't know if you know, during the, that interview, I said, I'm interviewing this guy. I'm not endorsing this guy. I'm not endorsing the Boogaloo Boys. I'm not doing any of that. I don't know anything about the Boogaloo Boys. I'm interviewing this guy because I saw him give a speech at the state capitol in Michigan, and he was standing there with a Black Lives Matter person and an LGBT activist. And that's why I'm interviewing this guy. And all I'm doing is interviewing this guy. And so people, of course, want to smear me because at that time, I was pushing for force to vote against uh, and exposing the Justice Democrats and the Dem and AOC and the squad. And so they, again, used a smear tactic to make it look like Jimmy Dores. Of, and the reason why I brought him on was because I didn't know anything about the fucking Boogaloo Boys or the Proud Boys. I thought they were the same. And it turned out the Boogaloo Boys were invented as a counter to the Proud Boys. They, mm -hmm. They're, they're anti-racist. They worked with Black Lives. Now, not all of them, but 
it's been and it's been documented that they work with the, they provided protection for Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, mm -hmm. The Magnus himself admitted to being uh, gay. He's not gay to not one hundred percent straight is what he said. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are anti cop. They're anti war. Mm -hmm. So what I try to tell people is that I've been in several unions and the way you organize people is you organize them along common interests and it, you don't show up on the in, on the shop floor and go who here is a proud boy you're out who's here is a burglar boy you're out yeah. all right and i'm gonna go ahead and stop it there and pop back out so that's very important because i saw people attacking Nick and Fred Hampton left us on Twitter saying, why didn't you ask him about the Boogaloo boys? You just saw in that clip right there, they did ask him about it. And like I said, if you watch the entire interview, you will see that they, they talked to him about a number of things, but they did ask him about that. So I felt like that was really unfair to come after them and accuse them of not doing something that they did do. Now I'm going to show you the clip from Kyle's show where he addresses Bosch coming onto the show. And the issue with Bosch that a lot of people had was Bosch advocating for using the N word and um, Bosch is okay with child. Actually, I don't think I can say the word on here because it might get flagged. So I'm going to just say child P, but most of you guys know what I'm talking about. So let me share that clip. I realized my position is not that I'll talk to anybody. Um, now, if others say, hey, I'll talk to anybody, I would say, that's totally fine. That's their decision. They could talk to whoever they want, even somebody who is pro-genocide. But I'll say this, you need to make sure you ask the right questions. If you talk to somebody who has some hideous, odious, terrible views, and you don't push them on the things that are hideous, odious, terrible views, well, then I do have an issue with it myself. And I'll say it's, it's irresponsible to platform person X, Y, or Z if you're not pushing back on these certain beliefs that they have where you need to push back on it. So I personally wouldn't talk to anybody. I do have lines. I do have standards. But I would defend somebody who talks to literally anybody as long as they're asking the right questions. So that gets into, um, you know, the broader topic of what's the criteria to talk to somebody for me. And for me, again, it's very simple. All I need to see is that they're intellectually honest. So as long as in my estimation, they're intellectually honest and I find them interesting, then I want to talk to them. Now, that's. Okay. So I'm going to pop out just there for a second, but I'm going to go back to something else that, that he mentions. So you just heard right there. He explained like what his, his criteria is for having people on the show. Now, one thing that he did say that I want to fast forward to is he talks about the whole cancel culture. So this is important. I want everybody to hear this. There's no way you're ever going to build a, you know, a left-wing project or have left-wing unity or have left-wing victories if you can't get people who nominally agree as much as us three agree to sit down and have a conversation and iron things out. Now, listen, at the end of the day, are there still areas where we disagree? Sure. Again, it's fine to be specific in criticisms. If somebody talks to somebody who's pro-genocide and they don't push them on the pro-genocide position, I'm going to criticize the fuck out of them and be like, that's irresponsible. But you can't say the conversation I had with Vosh is irresponsible. When we ironed out all the areas where we disagree, we had those conversations. We went into every nook and cranny of, you know, of, of nuanced discourse on the areas where we have nominal disagreement. I'm going to pop back out. There's more of that I could play, but we'd be here for a long time. So... Now I'm going to do the third part and I'm going to tell you how I feel about all of this. I'm going to look at both sides of this. So I don't want people to get upset with me, even though some of you may, but I, I want to look at both sides and I want to be clear. First and foremost, it is a problem with people just reading headlines and not actually watching the full video. I'm going to tell you, honestly, myself, I did not see the interview between like Crystal Kyle and Bosch. He says in, in his episode that they, they addressed and talked about those issues. I don't know. I didn't watch it. So it would be unfair for me to tell you that they did or didn't because I didn't see it. Just going to put that out there. Another thing that I do want to reference is I understand the problems and the criticisms that people have about Vosh. 
I don't agree with everything that Vosh does. I don't watch Vosh's show. I, I didn't even know who Vosh was until like a couple weeks ago. And that was because of things that I saw on Twitter. So I told you guys, I'm always late with stuff. I'm always late to the party. How do I feel about this as an African-American leftist commentator? One of the things I will say, and I do consider myself to be further left than Kyle. And I haven't watched Secular Talk in a long time. It, it's been a while. So even like clicking on this on Twitter, I was like, oh, shoot, I forgot what the, I, I just haven't seen it in a long time, right? So one of the things that he said about leftist unity, I do agree with that. And I don't agree with Kyle on a lot of things, but I do agree with that. It is a problem. We have this tendency on the left to, to quickly cancel people, man. If somebody doesn't agree with every single thing that you say, we're so quick to write them off. And I saw people doing this to Jen Perlman as well on Twitter because she had him on her show. I'm just going to tell you about my experience. I was on Jen Perlman's birthday, her birthday event. Bosch came on there. I didn't know that Bosch was coming. I didn't know none of those people were coming. I can only tell you from my experience with him in that small moment, I did not see the things that other people have shown on Twitter. I didn't see that. Granted, this was a birthday thing. It is what it is. I'm not defending Bosch by any means necessary. But one thing I did get from that birthday event, that was the first time that all of us, I felt like as leftists, were able to come together in the same space and get along. I don't see that often because it just doesn't happen. We feel strongly about certain issues and things and we voice them, but sometimes it gets to the point where we feel so strongly about it, we wanna cancel people who disagree with us. And in terms of leftist unity, if we continue to cancel, you can't cancel everybody. If we cancel everybody, we're not gonna have leftist unity. In reference to Vosh, I'm gonna be uh, very real here. In reference to the N-word, it is never okay for a white person to use that word. I've been very vocal about that. When I interviewed Franco from Frank Analysis and we were talking about MPP having the same problem, I was very vocal about that. That is never okay. But the problem is if you don't have conversations with those people who are using that word, who think it's okay to use it if they use it in a different context or, or if they use it with the A instead of an ER at the end, if you don't have those conversations with them about that, how are, you, how are you going to get that message across to them? This is where the difficulty comes in because it is really easy to talk to people that agree with everything that you agree with. That's the easy part. But the hard part is talking to people that don't agree with you, that you don't agree with. And I can honestly tell you throughout my life, there have been people that I've had conversations with that I don't agree with on everything. I have friends that are conservative. I have friends that are uh, libertarian. We don't agree on everything, but that didn't stop us from becoming friends. And talking to people who feel differently than me has actually helped me grow as an individual. Again, I'm not defending Vosh here. Again, I just told you what I felt about with the N-word, how I feel about that. In reference to the platforming comment, as an African-American leftist, I will say, I understand where people are coming from about that as well. Here's something you guys don't know, or you may not know. It is really difficult as a Black leftist commentator to gain traction whether it's YouTube, Rockfin, whichever. The reason being, especially with YouTube, is that we don't fit the algorithm. Some of the issues that we talk about, like policing, Black people, it doesn't fit the algorithm in YouTube. So it's harder for people to find us. Most of the traffic on my channel comes from external sources. It comes from Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, not actually YouTube itself. 
because I don't appear for a lot of people. So for the people who were, you know, coming after FHL for having Jimmy Dore on there and he had Boogaloo Boys like on his show, if Jimmy Dore wants to platform Black leftist commentators, then so be it. Because I can tell you, as someone who is in this space, not many people are willing to do that. It's very difficult, you guys. You only see the things, as, as the audience, you only see what's on the screen. You don't see what happens on the back end. And I'll give you an example with myself. When I decided to move my channel from vlogging to the podcast format, in the very beginning of my podcast, it was very difficult for me to get guests to come on my show. Mainly because most people didn't even know who I was. It's hard when people don't know you. But one thing that I will always remember is that Torn Walker, Marianne Williamson, and Jen Perlman, they were one of the few people early on in the beginning that was willing to give me an opportunity. When everybody else said no, or they didn't respond, again, simply they don't know me, they said yes. And I will always remember that. You got to like understand, like for a Black leftist commentator, like we don't have the outlet that white leftist commentators have. I just told you we don't fit the algorithm. So that's number one. Number two, the way for us to get around that for me, again, like I said, was external traffic that helps, but it's still not where it should be. The other way is platforming. And that's why I was so disappointed to see people attack FHL for having Jimmy Dore on there. I'm like, no, you don't, you guys don't understand when you're not doing this work, you don't understand how hard it is to get people to come on, especially when you're new and especially when you're black. It is not easy. When someone invites me to come on their show, I'm especially grateful, especially grateful because again, not many people in this space are willing to platform us. So don't come after FHL for having Jimmy Dore on their show. I watched that full interview and I believe they asked every question that they should have asked and I thought it was a great interview. If you haven't done that, please go watch the interview. In reference to the video with Crystal and Kyle and Bosch, again, I did not watch the video. I've only seen segments of what people have posted on Twitter. Um, but if you can do so, I encourage you to go watch that whole video too. Heck, I haven't watched it. I told you I haven't watched it myself. Like, just late with the shit. I have to focus on the things that I do have control over. And if there are things that are happening and I don't necessarily agree with it, Instead of attacking that person, instead of coming after that person, I'm willing to sit and have a discussion with them. I'm willing to talk about it on my channel and educate people as to, hey, this is why this issue, this is why what, you, what this person did is not okay, but not attacking them because attacking them doesn't change anything. We have to be willing to sit down and have discussions with people that we don't agree with. And we have to be willing to sit down and have discussions with people that may not even be as far left as we are. And again, in reference to the Vosh thing, I do understand where people are coming from. I get what people are saying about the platforming. Why platform him when there's other people that should be platformed? I do get it, I understand it. But then that goes back to the things that I can't control. I can't control who other people have on their show. So for the person who, who asked me that question that came in through earlier this morning, that's my response to that. I can control who I have on my show and I can continue to educate people about these issues and about how it affects Black leftists and about how we feel because I have that lived experience. I think back to when Jimmy Dore went on to Tucker Carlson and he was talking about Medicare for all. I remember people got really angry about that as well. And I'm like, well, how are you going to spread the message about the benefits of Medicare for all to people who are outside the left if you don't talk to people who are outside the left? 
We can't continue to just keep talking to people in our circle. That's not how things, that's not how this works. If you want to get more people to join the left, you're going to have to talk to people who are not on the left. That is my take on that. I was not prepared to do this video. I was not going to do this video like I told you guys, but because people asked me, like, as a Black person, how does this make you feel? I mean, you know, case in point, like, do I wish more commentators were platforming Black, lefts black leftists? Absolutely. Do I wish more commentators were platforming activists? Absolutely. But I can't control who they bring on their show. That is part of the reason why I have my show. You guys see, I have activists on. In fact, I've had several activists come on multiple times. I have Black leftist commentators come on to my show. So sometimes we can't sit back and wait for other people to do what we think should happen. Sometimes we have to be the one to do it. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what I will continue to do going forward. Mm -hmm.